All right, welcome back guys. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how I am restoring this Minimax three-point hydroplane. I've never owned a wooden boat before, so a lot of this was completely new to me. So I'm gonna share what I learned and show you what I did to this thing. Uh, if you've never been here before, please check out some of my other content. I'm restoring a 911 and a really high performance tunnel hull, as well as this little guy. This is a 1950s three-point hydroplane uh, called a Minimax. And I bought this thing a couple weeks ago for about 300 bucks. All the wood was in good shape, but the finish was completely failed. So I had to remove all that. And then I'm trying an epoxy coating instead of fiberglass resin um, for a little bit more strength and durability. I've never used that before either. But let's jump into it. I'll show you where I started. You can see that there's some raw wood exposed in a couple places, uh, a lot of places actually. And this finish, I don't know if this is spar urethane or fiberglass resin. It's cracked and it's flaking off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand this down and then put a new coat of epoxy over it and let it soak into that wood and make it really waterproof. So the sander I'm gonna be using is just a Craftsman disc sander. I just bought this thing because I didn't have one. Um, one thing I think is interesting is this is the same thing as a DeWalt, but it's cheaper, like literally the same thing. The only thing they're changing is the exterior plastics on the overmolding, but when you take these apart, they're identical, so you can save yourself 10 bucks by picking up a red one instead of a yellow one. Plus, red ones are better anyway. This is gonna take forever. I mean, I just, this is barely cutting through this. So I could try a heavier grit or I could try a chemical stripper. Um, the issue with the chemical stripper that I have is that I don't really want to ruin the finish on the other side of the boat. All right, so see how there's some air pockets on these cracks here? The finish itself is actually cracked and it's starting to lift where it's cracked. So this finish is definitely shot. So what you want to do is you want to take your heat gun and heat up an area. When you start to see bubbles, that's when you know it's ready to go. So there's a bubble, another bubble. Now that's probably going to come up pretty easy. When this thing sinks, it's not my fault. It's weirdly satisfying though when little, when like the sheet of it comes up. <laughs> Think of this as a blowtorch, right? Most of the heat, if you angle it, is hitting right here, but some of it's going over here. Oh, right, you're heating so, up like, areas. So like, if you start you to go where you're gonna go, right. you can start to preheat where you're going next, yeah. is what I'm getting at, and then it'll come off easier. Seems to be a good trick to, you know, talk someone else into doing it in the guise of teaching them. <laughs> I'm starting to notice a trend here. Hey, how many other girls you know who know how to do this? I've never taken a pull. <laughs> so her goal right now is to finish this whole front sponson so she can claim a quarter of the responsibility here. <laughs> is that my goal? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there's a couple things that I've noticed just from doing this. One is I think it's easier to kind of pull the, the putty knife toward you than to push it away from you. You can kind of use your, your whole torso. Um, so I think that helps. And then in terms of getting this stuff off, it's you can kind of put your heat gun right in front of the putty knife and that works okay. But then sometimes you can just like heat up an area until you see it start to bubble. And when it bubbles, it's probably ready to come up. You can then go scrape that area while you warm up a different area. It's weird. Um, I'm not really sure which way is faster. And if you do gouge the wood, and you push down a little too much and it starts to catch the wood. Um, what I found works well is let's say this is the wood, just go 90 to it to chop it off and then keep going otherwise if you keep going once you gouge the wood it'll just keep diving into the wood make a bigger gouge So 
So I think I'm reached a stopping point here just because the sun's about to go down. But I have the majority of this hall scraped. I still need to get the sides and everything. Um, yeah, this is a lot of work, but it's not too bad really. I mean, this was just my lunch hour and after work. So, I mean, not terrible. A couple things I've learned though, is that when you see like a darker area of wood, it probably means that wood is not in great shape. Like right around here, see that dark area? What was happening was my putty knife was digging in a little more. I think this wood isn't, it's not rotten, like it doesn't feel spongy, but it's not totally healthy either. Um, nothing lasts forever. I'm gonna try to make this thing last as long as I can. So we're gonna sand this thing and do some epoxy coatings and stuff on this, but what I really wanna do is sweep this off right now and sand it just to see what it starts to look like because I can keep scraping tomorrow and I wanna do this before it gets dark. <laughs> All right, so I think this thing is sanded as good as it's going to be sanded anyway. Um, let's take a look at it and I'm just gonna show you a couple things. Really, the, the hull is in pretty good shape. There's not any major damage. There's just little tiny gouges. Like here's one, there's one, there's one right there. And what I wanna do is I wanna treat all the spots or the gouges and imperfections with some epoxy and then sand it flat so that when I come and do the final layer where I'm coating the whole boat, um, it goes over the top of something flat. So this is the epoxy that I'm using. It's called Pro Marine Epoxy. Uh, it's a little cheaper than the West Systems, but from what I read, it's pretty much the same stuff. We're gonna give this a shot. I've done a lot of research about epoxy in this, and one of the things you can do is you can cut the epoxy with some acetone or some thinner to make it a little more liquid, so to speak, and less gluey. And the idea is that you get a deeper penetration into the wood with the thinner, thinned out epoxy. That's intuitively what I thought would be the best way to go, but there has been some research done and I'll put a link down in the description below or uh, right up here. They took multiple pieces of wood, all the same size, and they weighed them, right? So they knew the mass of this certain size wood and they tried treating it a bunch of different ways. They tried treating it with just the penetrating epoxy, just regular epoxy, different layers. They even tried what I suggested where they used a penetrating epoxy and then um, regular layers of epoxy. And they put them underwater and then they took them out and they weighed them. And by figuring out how much uh, the mass increased, they could figure out how much water weight it's brought on, which basically tells you how well the different techniques are doing of preventing moisture from going from this side to inside the wood. And even with the thinned out epoxy with regular epoxy on top, it did not do as well as just having more coats of epoxy. So what we're gonna do is, I'm thinking three coats total on this boat, but we're gonna start by just repairing the flaws in the hull. So let's do that first. First things first, I wanna blow off this hull to open up the pores. All right, so before I started the epoxy, I did do one more thing. I wanted to just scrape the bottom inch or so of the transom. I think this finish is in really good shape. This varnish looks great. I just wanted to expose this, this edge or this seam of where the wood comes together. My intention is to just epoxy a clean line, you know, up to about here or so. Another tip is I just installed the pumps on here and what I'm going to do is pump it until the both pumps are primed and then throw that out. And then it is one squirt of this and one squirt of this, and that's a five to one ratio. So it should be ready to rock. Let's try it. Okay, so the repair patches of epoxy are on here. One thing I tried to do here was just add some tape to rebuild this corner and then I just put a big dollop of epoxy right there. 
I tried the microspheres or the filler to make a thickened epoxy, but I didn't really like the way it was turning out. Here you can see, I mean, this is filled in pretty well. Once I sand this kind of stuff, you know, it's gonna be pretty flat. I don't know if that's reading correctly. And then I just put a coat on this back edge here because I wanna start to build this up. I'd like to have a pretty sharp corner here and it's beveled. So I figured why not just start now with the first layer. Um, other than that, we're gonna wait for this to cure, sand it, and then it's time for more coats. So, excited. Okay, first coat done. Let's uh, let's see how it's going here. So you can kind of see where I did the repairs earlier. It's not soaking in as well as the rest of it. That's fine because this was already soaked into the wood fiber and now it's sitting on top. It's soaking in pretty well. So we're gonna see how this turns out in a few hours. So I'm excited, this looks good. Second coat is on. It's looking pretty good, but I am having some issues. It seems to be on this front piece, there's all these bubbles happening. I have no idea why. Um, hopefully I can sand those out. But yeah, it's still soaking in. I think the next coat I do, I'm actually gonna go against the grain to try to get the epoxy down into all these little, uh, I don't know, whatever you call this, into the grain. I'm just gonna go against the grain next time. But I think this might be all I get done today because it is already two o'clock and this thing needs a few hours to dry before I can bring it inside. So I'm gonna leave her alone now, come back in a little bit. All right, this thing died. Don't ever buy a GoPro 7. It's gonna die again. I don't know if it repaired the file or not, but the third coat is on and I went side to side. So we'll see how that looks tomorrow. I'm gonna shut the garage and try to keep the heat in here, so. You hit the lights. Oh. What? No. What? Are, are you alive? Oh shit. Oh no, is it stuck in there? Oh man, he's already missing part of his legs. Oh. Careful. He's not dead. Yeah, he is. <laughs> no, he's not. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, I guess go backwards and chop off those parts of his legs. Do you want me to do it? No, I got it. I saved him. Do not fake throw the spider at okay, me. I will, your <laughs> I will not be amused. Okay. Here, wait. Go, baby. All right. Well, apart from the abnormally large spider that was stuck <laughs> right there. Um, okay. Yeah, it's curing. It's gonna be 70 today, so if we could get this thing outside, it'd probably get rock hard. But what I'm, what I'm wondering is if it's soft enough to do more coats. Cause I, could, I think it could still use more. Like right here, that looks like bare wood. And there's a bunch of like cracks in the wood that there's still need to get. Spots here that. Yeah, like I think it needs to get another coat. When you say soft enough, what do you mean? Well, you can only recoat if it's tacky. Once it's oh, cured okay, a certain gotcha. amount, it won't. I think it's tacky still. So. All right, this is four coats of epoxy.
So what I'm trying to do while I'm working here is scuff up the entire surface to get it kind of even. And then if there are some areas that I just recently added a little more epoxy to, like right here, you can kind of see, and right here, um, I'm just tilting the sander to try to feather it into the rest of the surface. So you can kind of see here, there's, there's no actual real edge on some of these repairs. They're pretty smooth. it's just about to rain in fact I think I can hear it coming in right now but this is the first stage of the sanding of the epoxy um, you can see it's pretty even I have a couple low spots still but looks pretty good I think the next thing I'm gonna do is block sand this a little bit to get it a little more flat and then we're going to roll on the last two coats of epoxy in there to keep all the uh, tree gunk from falling into it and other spiders and such this is a super simple dolly I made for this thing. It's just a two by six with a couple two by fours with some holes drilled into them for the feet. And then I just took some lag bolts and some old wheels from a uh, trailer jack. And you can just lift on this and move it around, which is a lot easier than what I was doing before. All right, so after sanding all the coats of epoxy, this is what I wound up with. You can see that it's pretty even. I, I do have a couple spots that are still shiny, but they're down in there. I'm gonna hit them with just a little bit of sandpaper on my finger, and then we're gonna be putting a final coat on here. This did have four coats on it, but as you can see, I've gotten pretty thin in some of the areas that were higher, but a lot of the low spots have been really filled in nicely. So I put a straight edge on this thing. It's pretty flat, so this should be the finishing coats. So let's do it. All right, I just finished the last coat, except it is terrible. Um, I don't know what I did wrong. I'll show you what's up. Basically, the epoxy is beating off, <laughs> beating off the uh, previous finish here. I, I sanded this to 120, I wiped it off. I, I don't know what I did wrong, but you can see the epoxy is just, it, it almost looks like water on a freshly waxed car. It's, it's not adhering at all, so I'm probably gonna have to sand all this off and go read what I did wrong on the internet. So that's what I'm gonna go do now. So I'll be back. All right, so this, uh, this finish is still tacky, but because it beat it up, there's a lot of places that did not get a layer of epoxy. And what I'm thinking I'm gonna do right now is just throw another layer on. I mean, right now if I sand it, there's gonna be hard edges everywhere because of where it's beating up. But I figure if I just put another layer on it, maybe it'll, maybe it'll work itself out. I don't know, whatever. This is a last ditch effort before I sand everything. So let's throw another coat on this thing. All right, so the second coat is not beating up as much. It's uh, starting to level out pretty well, so I'm glad I just went for it. It was still tacky, so I just figured put another coat on it. Maybe it'll even out. If not, I have to sand it anyway, so no big deal. Um, thank you for watching. You're caught up so far. In the next episode, I'm gonna be putting the finishing touches on the bottom of this hull. Also, please check out my SST project. I'm restoring a 1980s Sleekcraft SST that's gonna be a really fast boat. Uh, and again, budget build because I'm doing most of the work. One other thing, I just do this for fun. So if you like this stuff, please like and subscribe. If not, I don't care. It's totally up to you. This is just what I'm going to be doing anyway. So I figured why not have some fun with it, share it with some other people. Hopefully we can learn something. Also, if again, this is my first wood haul. So if I did something wrong and you guys know like, for instance, why this epoxy was beating up, 
please let me know in the comments below because I don't really know what I'm doing. This is my my first time restoring a wood boat, so I'm, I'm definitely learning. Other than that, stay tuned. Here's a sneak peek of what's going on in the back of this thing in the next episode. So here's a 1950s Mercury race motor that is going to be perfect for this little thing. So stay tuned. Hopefully I'll finish the haul by then and we'll start ripping on this. Cheers.